I saw this Ralph Waldo Emerson quote in The Mask of Masculinity by Lewis Howes, and it was, every man is in some way my superior, and in that, I can learn of him. Have you ever heard the phrase becoming the best version of yourself? Yeah, me too. But what does that even mean, and how do we become that person? I'm here to help you navigate through those questions and come up with actionable steps in order for you to live your best life. We've got to discover what we want. We've got to figure out a plan on how to get there, and then we have to go. We can't just sit and wait any longer. Life won't wait on us. So come join me on this constant journey to become the best version of yourself and to find your best you. I'll see you on the other side. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Nick Carrier's Best You Podcast, where I, Nick Carrier, will be your podcast host. I am absolutely stoked. I'm jacked up. I'm fired up to be with you guys here today and to be finally launching this podcast. I've been working on it for quite some time now, and I'm super pumped to have a resource to be able to provide you guys with tools, tips, and inspiration to help you guys live your best life and become your best self and find your best you. With this episode today, I want to provide you guys with a few different kinds of information. I want to start off with telling you a little bit about the podcast, how often you can expect episodes to be released, what you can expect out of the episodes themselves, and how long those episodes are going to be. So you can expect um, one episode every single Monday. On Monday, those are going to be interviews with people who are super successful and they're super focused on becoming that best version of themselves. These people are people that I seek after because they inspire me. They've motivated me to make a change in my life, to maybe create a new habit, to shift my mental attitude towards something. And they've inspired me in a way that I want to bring them in so that they can kind of voice their mindset and all these things that they've taught me to be able to teach me even more, but to be able to spread that to you guys, to be able to inspire you to make a change maybe in your life, or at least to make you think about becoming that best version of yourself. Those episodes are gonna be anywhere from about 35 to 55 minutes for those interviews. And then every Thursday, you can also expect one episode, but it's just gonna be from me, and those will be about five minutes long. Those episodes are gonna be my three takeaways from the interview the Monday before. So I always think that it's super important to be able to have actionable steps that you can take from inspirational, inspirational and motivational people. So what I will do is dissect each interview that I perform and it be, to be able to provide you guys with specific things that you can or in that you can try to implement in your life and that I can try to implement in my life as well because this journey of becoming the best version of yourself is the journey that I'm on. I'm constantly on it. I'm always trying to upgrade myself and improve. And I know you guys probably are in some some way, shape, or form as well. So I want to go along the journey with you guys. So I will try to dissect these interviews and come up with my best three takeaways and best three actionable steps in order to move forward on that goal of becoming the best version of ourself. So that's the details about the podcast. But now I want to get a little bit into kind of my background, my story, and what led me to creating my own podcast. So the way I want to start is just over a year ago now, on Monday, on a Monday morning at 8.47 a.m., I'm sitting in a desk at a cubicle and I'm freaking out. What am I going to do? But before I even go further on that, I'm going to take you back to high school. I'm going to kind of run back through a little bit of my story and because I think it's important to know where I came from to what led me where I uh, was that 8.47 a.m. Monday morning. So I went to high school in Atlanta, Georgia. I went to Marist, which is a private Catholic high school. Yes, I'm a pretty sheltered child. Um, had a great childhood, had great friends growing up. My parents are awesome. Um, inspired me to work hard and, and always do what I wanted to do. And they've always supported me in the best way possible. And in high school, I always had great friends. I played football and baseball. I was the captain of my varsity football and baseball teams, which both of which were successful had great friends, great teammates, everything like that, and I was planning to go to the University of Georgia, and I got in, and I'm going, so it's a very typical path of someone who, who went to that school and had that similar upbringing, so I'm going to Georgia, everything's great, and when I'm going to Georgia, I'm trying to think about what I'm passionate about, what I'm going to major in, because you got to decide a major, right, and everybody's kind of asking you, what are you passionate about, what do you want to do when you grow up, and I always absolutely hated getting those questions, because I really had kind of no idea. I know in high school that I liked sports, but like other than that, 
I didn't really have anything that I knew I was passionate about. So going to Georgia, a lot of my friends were going to major in business. And, and that's kind of like what my dad instructed me to do. Thought that would be the best kind of overarching major to do to be able to kind of set me up for maybe whatever I wanted to do. So a lot of people were doing that. A lot of dads and my dad were telling me that it'd be a good idea. So why not do business? But I didn't really ever have anything specific that led me to thinking like, I want to do business besides my dad creating his own business and being an entrepreneur. And so started majoring in finance and then added risk management as a second major. And and it was great. Started off great, you know, went through it like like normal and discovered a little bit of a passion for it. And then my junior year or before, but in between my sophomore and junior year, I was working out at my gym back at home in Atlanta over the summer where I always worked out in high school, which I had a personal trainer for sports and stuff. And I was talking to my personal trainer, always had a good relationship with him. And his name is Isaac Korntig, who I always go back to and thank. And our conversation was normal, but then it ended with him asking me if I'd ever had any interest in doing personal training. And I was like, you know what? I have a little bit because I always really loved working out for, for sports and training and, and everything like that. So he was like, all right, talk to me after your workout and, and I'll, I'll kind of walk you through it. And so I talked to him. I got my personal training certification, not really knowing what I was going to do with it, but I was like, heck, I'm just going to go for it. Why not? Um, and then I went back to school my junior year and I was like, I got I want to use this somehow. And I started applying at big box gyms, but really like online applications, submitted paper forms, but never really heard back from anything. And I was like a little bit down on myself because of that. But then I start, I see this orange tent that says Orange Theory Fitness on it. And I was like, huh, maybe one day I'll go by there and, and check it out, see what it's all about. And so one day I, I randomly decided and remembered, I was like, I was going to go do that. So I went and did it. And I talked to who was going to be the owner of the place. They hadn't opened the studio yet. So I talked to who was going to be the owner and we set things up. And, and long story short, I was granted the opportunity to try to be a trainer. So you have to go through a training process in order to be a coach. So I came back to school a little bit early and I, I started going through the process and the process was pretty grueling. It's pretty tiring the way that we did it. I don't think everybody does it this way, but you go in at basically eight o'clock in the morning and don't leave till about five o'clock in the afternoon. And I know that's a normal work day, but during the first half of the day, you're trying to learn kind of all about orange theory exercises, the science behind it, everything like that. Second half of the day, you take turns with the other trainers going on the microphone and practicing being on the microphone, which is a huge part of being a coach uh, of a group fitness class. And throughout that process, like the training part of it, you're working out for the second half of the day for like almost five hours straight for the most part. And it's grueling, it's tough, and it's mentally and physically exhausting. And so we kind of get to the third third day or so, and I very much remember the specific moment. You know those moments in life that you can always kind of remember for whatever reason? You don't, you don't even know necessarily why, but I'm about to have one of these moments. So on this third day, we're sitting there, and I remember uh, Hancock James, who was our trainer leading us through this process, was talking about kind of the time commitment that I was going to take and, and all these things. And all I could, all that was running through my head was I'm double majoring in finance and risk management. I'm already volunteering a couple places on campus. I need to figure out an internship for this upcoming summer. And I have all these, like, I got to do this, I got to do that kind of things popping up. And I'm like, how the heck am I going to be able to? give my time and commit as much time as I want to to this thing. And then all of a sudden, I remember him saying, Nick, are you okay? And I was like, kind of jolted my head up. I think I was looking pale because I was just kind of like freaking out. And I was just like, pulled it together real quick. I was like, yeah, I'm okay. Not really being okay at the time. And then I remember literally from that moment, making the conscious decision of being like, you know what, Nick, you love training. This is going to be tough. But you, because you love fitness and training so much, you're going to figure it out and you're going to work through it. It's not necessarily going to be easy at the beginning, but because of your passion for it, you're going to figure it out. You're going to make it happen. And, and so I did, and I probably didn't start off as great um, as a great coach, but I can probably say I'm still doing it now almost three years later, and I think that a lot of people would probably say I'm a pretty good coach. And so I started doing Orange Theory, got into the fitness thing, developed a huge passion, even bigger passion for it, for kind of providing that motivational atmosphere for people who are trying to get fit and become better versions of themselves. So I had in, the, had in my head that approaching graduation, I wanted to do something in fitness long term, but I didn't really know what that looked like 
because I just had that stereotype in my head that personal trainers don't really make all that much money. Not that I did too much research or anything behind it. I just kind of thought that in general. And so I know, and I know I wasn't going to be an Orange Theory fitness trainer for 40 years down the road. So I wasn't really sure what that was going to look like. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go get a job in finance and maybe keep some kind of fitness on the side. And then after a few years of doing that, I would. I would go do the fitness thing and, and kind of figure out what I wanted to do. Not really knowing exactly how I was going to figure it out, but that was my plan in my head. And, and so that, and, and so it started off pretty well. I, I had a job lined up to be a mortgage lending officer and I was going to do six months of training in the Atlanta office where, where I'm from and then move to the Nashville office in the beginning of 2018. And so it was all set up for me perfectly. I had kind of the decision that I didn't really want to be in Atlanta after I graduated. I lo- love Atlanta, love being with my parents, nothing nothing like that. I just I had something tell me I had to go do my own thing. I had to get somewhere new. I had to expose myself to new things to really kind of see who I was and prove to myself that I can be successful in a different place because I felt like I could be in Atlanta and and be successful and kind of go the the regular route that a lot of people do. And I just knew that I had to I had to figure out more. I had to go someplace new and discover kind of who I was and what I'm made of being surrounded in a different atmosphere. So um, right before I started the training in Atlanta, the, the Nashville part of the job fell through and I was only gonna be able to work um, for the company in Atlanta. And so I was like, well, you know what, I'm not interested anymore because I knew I was so sold on on going somewhere else and I was pr- I was like very sold on Nashville. And so when that happened, I just told him I wasn't interested. And so I had a buddy already living in Nashville who I called and asked if I could come and live on his couch and figure it out. And he graciously accepted. So I came and moved and I started looking for a job in finance. Immediately, I was hustling. I hustled before I even got there. I had three interviews lined up the first three days that I got to Nashville. And so I, I was trying to figure it out and I quickly kind of rushed into a job for, for money purposes and I uh, accepted a job as a recruiter for an employment agency and so I started that job and that's kind of brings me back to, to where I am now. It's the third Monday at 8.47 a.m. and the last two weeks, the first week wasn't bad of the, of the job and the second week was a little bit tough. You know, I, I kept having this, this same thought process of I know I want to do something in fitness long term. Why am I wasting nine hours a day sitting in this cubicle when I could figure out what I want to do in fitness now? It's like I sh- I kept thinking like how did I not have this real realization beforehand? Why did why did it took it literally took me like being in there to realize like oh wait like this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. I literally felt a piece inside of me die when I walked into that cubicle and sat down on my chair. I'm like, I'm literally going to be sitting down here basically for the next nine hours. Um, and that, that thought process just came upon me. Why am I doing this? Why am I wasting my time when I literally should be going and doing this, figuring out now? And and so I, while I had this thought process, I also was like, Nick, this is just like challenging. This is just something that you have to go through. Um, it's going to get better with time. And so I kept trying to pep talk myself. And so over the weekend after the second week, I was kind of back in a high place. I was like, you know what? I'm going to figure it out. I'll push through it. I know it's uncomfortable, but that's what it takes. But then I get back to work on Monday morning and I'm right back into that thought process, that negative mindset like, oh, why am I here? What am I doing? And then at 8.47 a.m., I made the decision I'm going to quit. I mean, I just, I'm, I'm done. And I don't like using the word quit because to me it almost comes across, brings the notion of failure. And I don't think I failed at that job, but I knew that it was time to go out. So I made the decision that I was going to leave that job. And at 8.47 a.m. I made the decision, but it's a lot easier said than done. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go in there at 9.03 a.m. So I have like 16 minutes to just kind of sit there. But you might think it might have been a tough 16 minutes, but it really wasn't because I actually had this clarity that, oh, I'm going to do it. Like no matter what, I'm done. 16 minutes to just kind of sit there and breathe. And I looked at, basically stared at the computer screen and didn't do a thing. So picked up my stuff, 9 or 3 a.m., walked in, told my boss what the situation was and kind of my thought process and exactly how I communicated with you guys. And he was very, very great about it, very accepting and 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 uh, very thoughtful about it. And he was like, you know what? If it's not best for you, it's not best for me, then I understand. And so I left. I had only been there for two weeks, so I hadn't really made a whole lot of contribution, so I didn't need to make put a two weeks in, so I literally walked out there at about 9.06 a.m. right after I told him, and then I was off. I was like, wow, 
I'm literally going to do this fitness thing. I'm trying to figure it out. And so I knew I could go back and do Orange Theory, but then I was trying to figure out what else I wanted to do. So I started doing some personal training at a gym. And, and then I kind of realized my passion was more than just the fitness. My passion came across as fitness in the beginning because I really am huge on becoming the best version of yourself. And fitness is an unbelievable avenue to do that. But there's a lot of it, a lot more that is involved with becoming the best version of yourself. And I realized how much of a passion I had for that other stuff, the mindset, the habits that you have to do, the lifestyle, all these sorts of things that I had been learning about. And I realized like I have such a passion for that. Like, how can I go do that? And then I, I saw this Ralph Waldo Emerson quote in The Mask of Masculinity by Lewis Howes. And it was, every man is in some way my superior and in that I can learn of him. And I, when, I, when I saw this quote, I was moved. I literally put down the book, didn't pick it up for 10 more minutes. And I was started to apply that to my life. And I was like, you know what? I realized, I think I, for the first time, I actually came to my own humility and I was humble. And I realized that there's so much out there that other people know that I don't, that I can learn from. You know, I know, I know a little bit about these certain things that I've been studying and been learning about, but there's so much, so many more different takes on it. And there's so many more different thought processes about so many things that I wanted to go in, take all of that in and be able to spread that to everybody else as well to benefit as many people that I possibly can. I'm a huge podcast fan. I know how much it's done for me, how much it's made me learn, how much it's crafted my mindset and my attitude towards things. So I want to be able to create a resource and create an avenue for people to have that same kind of inspiration for them and to provide tools and tips as well to make actionable steps and actionable strides forward to become that best version of yourself. So that's where I'm back, guys. Nick Carrier's Best You Podcast is full throttle underway. I'm super stoked to be here with you guys today. I hope you're stoked as well. Tell all your friends and family if you like this episode. Show them it. I hope you guys are stoked for episode number one coming up uh, with Derek Billups, um, owner and founder of City Fit Concierge. I hope to see you guys on Monday morning, and I am pumped about this, y'all. Let's get it.